Well, it's pretty, isn't it? This is the Susquehanna River. You know, in my travels here in the eastern part of the United States, I've crossed this river several times and I've come to the realization that this is a big river. So I looked it up. It's one of the longest rivers, or it is the longest river, actually, uh, along the east coast. And it is a very old river. 320 million years ago, this river flowed. It's among the oldest in the world. Uh, it was here before the mountains and the hills that it runs through today. It was here before then. Anyway, uh, let's get you a look from this side. Of course, the sun is right in the way, so it's not as good a shot. But anyway, see all the bridges that cross into Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the city's uh, or the state's capital. The wife and I will be going to the Capitol building here sh later in the video, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, uh, I'll tell you about the town a little bit, or the area. Now, the first European to actually come to this part of the state, to come to this area, was uh, Captain John Smith. Now you're thinking, that name rings a bell. Yeah, that's the guy that Pocahontas saved, according to legend. And of course, we all know that story, don't we? Anyway, uh, that was in, what, 1608. Now, in 1719, a guy named John Harris Sr., an English trader, settled the area. The city is named after him, Harrisburg. And uh, in 1812, the city was selected to be the state's capital. By the mid-1800s, it was very prosperous, growing fast, a major railroad center, and a major center for iron and steel production. Now, yeah, look at the water flowing by. This is the People's Bridge, or the Walnut Street Bridge, as it is also known. Uh, this was built in 1890. It's been here a long time. Anyway, let me continue on about the city. Now, as you know, steel and iron production declined across, the, or across this part of the country, and it was no exception here. The city itself went into decline, started losing population. At its peak, now this was in 1950, the city had 90,000 people in it, but um, those industries began their decline, people fled, now there are about 49,000 people here. That being said, the metro is pretty big. There's just shy of 600,000 people in the metro. You don't feel like you're in a city of 50,000 when you're here. But anyway, um, other things happened to the city that were not good. Of course, the uh, 1979 Three Mile Island incident, that was no bueno, of course. Uh, in the 80s, they had a mayor here, his name was Stephen Reed, very corrupt. Well, I thought I'd wait for that ambulance to go by. Anyway, more about this Stephen Reed, this mayor, uh, mishandled a lot of the city's funds, and by 2011, the city declared bankruptcy. But uh, the right people got in charge, turned things around, and by 2019, the city had a million dollar surplus in its coffers, and it's maintained a surplus ever since. So, uh, and it's, it's lovely. Uh, you're seeing it for yourself. Anyway, like I said, we're gonna look around a little bit. I'm going to drive through a few neighborhoods, then I will grab the wife and we will tour the capital. We will go to the Pennsylvania State Museum. Uh, I'll show you the highlights there and then we're going to have some dinner and drinks at a local place. Today is Thursday. It's the middle of May. Weather is beautiful. 62 degrees Fahrenheit, 17 Celsius, no wind perfect day for flying a drone so uh, I'm gonna show you the drone shot I got just a few minutes ago and I'm gonna give you the city statistics uh, as you see it 
Now again, the population of the city is just shy of 50,000. Median age is 32. Gender breakdown is 52% female, 48% male. Race breakdown, 44% black, 25% Hispanic, 24% white, 3% Asian, 4% mixed. Median household income, 44,400 a year. It's about $855 a week. Uh, an interesting number that stuck out for me, only 31% of the city is married. U.S. average is 50%. So less people get married here. Kind of interesting. Um, poverty is pretty high. 28%. U.S. average is 12.8. So that is over twice higher than the U.S. average. For children 17 and under, it is 44%. That's really high too. U.S. average is 17. So, U.S. average 17%, 44 here. I mean, that's three times higher than the U.S. average. Um, 65 and older, poverty level is 22%. Well, let's see, I'm in downtown now, just kind of taking a look around. And you see, architecturally speaking, a mix of old and new. Pretty nice mix, actually. Yeah, look over there. Anyway, uh, of course, as I told you, a lot of the industry collapsed here, but the city has diversified. Uh, here's the top employers now. The state of Pennsylvania is number one. No surprise, it is the capital. Federal government is number two. Giant Food Stores is the number three employer here. And now they own Food Lion, Shop and Stop, uh, Stop and Shop, a couple other uh, chains. Penn State Medical Center, that is fourth. Now number five on the list is Hershey Entertainment. It's a company that owns uh, parks, hotels, restaurants. And number six is Hershey Chocolate itself, or the company. They make more than just the uh, candy bars and uh, Walmart number seven I noticed that I hadn't seen any homeless yet maybe this is why uh, they don't allow it here or at least not in this part of town this is State Street which uh, leads up to the Capitol it is lined with churches a lot of them uh, there's the Capitol. We will show you the inside of that here shortly. Stick with us. I just want to show you the street real quick. A lot of beautiful old churches line it. Uh, let's see. I'll give you a shot here. Then uh, let me go up the street a bit, and I'll get you another shot. The closer you get to the Capitol building, the more impressive the churches get. Really beautiful, aren't they? And there's the Capitol itself. Other side here is, well, just really old buildings. A lot of offices. I should mention that uh, they have a lot of huge festivals here in the city, including the Great American, or yeah, the Great American Outdoor Show. It is the world's largest outdoor recreation show happens here every year and the Pennsylvania Farm Show that's the largest agricultural exhibition yearly here in the United States there's a lot of other festivals too but those are of particular note anyway uh, why don't I um, go check out some neighborhoods well to see I'm uh, east of downtown maybe south a little bit Median home value for this town is a little over 95000 just to let you know. A lot of row houses here. This is, um, well, it's an older part of town. A lot of this town is old, though.
interesting homes. I mean, that's really interesting. Yeah, a lot of interesting architecture here anyway. How cool is that? It's been tough finding cats lately. Yeah, that one behind the car now. I'm just doing a bit of exploring. Uh, this building or house is empty. I guess you expect to see that. A lot of population loss uh, in this town. Everybody's moved to the suburbs. We're actually out in Colonial Park. It's all very nice and new out there. Quite a few boarded up places here. Uh, according to the map, I'm in a place called Allison Hill. One of the, uh, I guess, from what I understand, or from what I understand, one of the roughest areas of town. Uh, I mean, it's not great, but it's not that bad either, to be honest. Now, I'm still in this Allison Hill district, but uh, this architecture here, uh, it's really amazing. What do you think? Has that uh, got some Dutch influences, maybe? Uh, it's over here on the other side as well. Really interesting looking homes. Always interesting in this part of the country where they'll have these little shops right in residential. Hey, you just can't do that where I come from in Texas. That's a no-go. Uh, zoning laws uh, prevent it. Uh, let's see, I'm in an area called Uptown now. It's uh, really beautiful. Very old homes. An incredible condition. You could tell, uh, yeah, they're they're all pretty old, early 1900s maybe. Really beautiful. This is a really beautiful area of town. On the other side too. I'm not even sure how you would describe that. Is that some of that prairie style architecture? Frank Lloyd Wright sort of inspired it looks like. And right next to it, that looks colonial. Beautiful, beautiful neighborhood here. Well, I'm back in downtown near the Capitol building. Got the wife in tow. You ready to go up? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to head up into the Capitol. 
that cool green dome, huh? Yeah, I like it. It's a great view from up here. Uh, let's see. Looks like we might be able to go in the front door. That's pretty rare in uh, state capitals. I like the, uh, I don't know if they call them statues on the sides. They're really cool. Oh yeah, those are cool. Oh, the women are naked. Yeah, these are striking. You can't miss this. A bunch of naked people as you walk in. Well, let's go check it out. Yeah, we can go right in the front door after security, of course. So I guess we better uh, get ready to do that first, huh? Yeah, go ahead. First things first. I'm sorry. Getting her passport stamped. Awesome. Yeah, any other? He likes to report everything. Okay, otherwise, <laughs> there it is. Anywhere over that. Oh, okay. okay. All right, we are here now. Of course, first things first, let's see the dome. It's beautiful. There it is. What'd you say? It's beautiful. It is, isn't it? I just like looking at all the detail, you know? Yeah, the lady who stamped your book said to go up to the fourth floor. So we'll do that. Hmm? It's cool. It is. Let's see what it looks like the other direction. Looks the same. <laughs> huh? It looks the same. Yeah, it's pretty much the same, isn't it? Pretty awesome. Well, should we do as she says and go up to the fourth floor? I don't want to take floors one at a time. You want to do floors one at a time? I don't know. It's up to you, honey. I don't care. All right. Get walking. All right. We are on the second floor. This is the governor's office, Josh Shapiro. Just, yeah, it's a nice office, huh? Wow, it's pretty cool. We won't bother him though. Yeah, All right, so. Uh, I just feel weird. There's people in there. Huh? Yeah, there's people in there working. Well, all right. She said to go to the fourth floor, so let's go check it out. We are on the fourth floor now. can see the dome really well from here. Well, what do you think? Is that all right? It's beautiful. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, huh? What'd you say? It's all the details, you know. It's yeah. unbelievable with all the details, you know? Yeah. Do you ever wonder how the heck do they clean this? <laughs> I do wonder that. They would have to come in here and scrub it every now and then, wouldn't they? What a job that would be. Yeah. They must use scaffolding. You'd have to use scaffolding. Hmm. Prohibited inside the Senate gallery. No photography, no videotaping, no animals, no yeah, books, yeah. magazines, no balloons, no chewing gum. No strollers. No electric stun guns. What? No mace? No fireworks? What, what was the other one? No strollers? No smoking, of course. No food or beverage. No backpacks. How about that? You're allowed to bring a person. Hmm? You're allowed to bring a person, apparently. No knives and guns? Damn it, I should have left mine at home. Yeah. Another view down there. There's the lady we were talking to in the middle of the frame right at the beginning. Way down there. Yeah, they got a lot of great murals, paintings up here. All right, we are at the State Museum of Pennsylvania, created in 1905. Collected, preserved, researched, interpreted cultural and natural history of the state. All right, so we're going to head into it. It's an impressive building. Am I right, hun? It's an impressive building. Yeah, it is. Cool. So, uh, Let's, um, well, let's go inside and take a look. We are at the entrance to the museum. Yeah, that guy is huge. He's quite tall. 
Who is he? Oh, it's a person. It's William Penn. Oh, I knew that. Uh, this was made in 1965. Depicts William Penn as a young man. Infused with a deep sense of need for civil and religious liberty. Yeah, let me get up to his face. Hmm. There you go. That's some big feet. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was looking at. I was looking at his shoes. The uh, world's first oil well was drilled here in Pennsylvania. I didn't know that. 100% pure Pennsylvania oil. Made from the highest grade crude oil in the world. In the world. Huh? What? Well, here's a slinky. Invented here in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. At Gimbel's department store in Philadelphia, where he sold the first 400 units in 90 minutes. How about that? And uh, this is a Mack truck. Is that the Bulldog, right? Yeah, this was uh, created here in Allentown. Allentown, Pennsylvania. Cheese steak sandwiches. Of course, uh, we've been to Pat's King Steaks. Oh, look, see? It, that has provolone cheese on it. That's the way you're supposed to eat it. Yeah, I'm not eating that one. Here's something we're all thankful for. Scott Tissue, <laughs> invented here in Philadelphia, 1879. I have to say, I have never seen this. This is a horse-drawn oil wagon. Hmm. Well, you know what's funny about that is you need the oil for your car. Yeah, I know. But to get the oil to your car, they use the horse That's funny. to bring it to you. Why didn't they just use oil? <laughs> when automobiles first appeared, the petroleum products they used were delivered in horse-drawn tank wagons, such as this one. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That is, wow, well, I've never seen this before. Have you? Anything like this. Did you know that Sears built and sold a vehicle? Horseless carriage. The Sears Model H business runabout motor buggy, 1908. Sold 3,500 of them. I had no idea Sears uh, built a vehicle. Which is even funnier. Sold it to their catalog. That's crazy. <laughs> this is a horse drawn mail cart. I have never seen one of these either. Rural delivery, route number one, U.S. Yeah, mail. I thought that's how they got the mail to you when you were a kid. No, when <laughs> I was a kid, we had the guy on the horse. <laughs> what do you call it? Oh, yeah. What'd that? you call that? Yeah. Well, whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah. Later, when I was about Pony 10... Pony Express? Pony Express, yeah. When I was about 12, this is how the mail came. We're <laughs> mm -hmm. always excited when the horse pulled up with the mail. Mail's here! That's so what we would do, screaming up to him as the mail guy came. True story. So what about the milkman? Did he use a horse-drawn carriage, too? I don't know. Yes. He was always in the... Uh, house with my mom. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is the Piper J3 Cub, Pennsylvania State Aircraft. Did you know states had an official aircraft? I never knew that. Yeah, I've never seen it before. A boat? Okay. Hmm. 1957 model Cerro Scotty Sportsman. 13 foot trailer. Small enough to be pulled with a little car. I think we should stop. Invented here in Pennsylvania, huh? I was going to say, I think we should stop staying in the hotels and just get us a camper just this size yeah. and tug it all around the country. What do you think? I think you're, you don't want that at all. <laughs> it's got a little of everything, I'd doesn't like it? I'd kill myself if that were the case. And it's got everything but a bathroom. Oh, yeah. We're it's cozy, isn't it? There you go. You have to go to the bathroom. You have to go to the bathroom outside. Try to find a 7-Eleven. Do they have 7-Elevens? No, you go outside. Okay. Well, this is an old steam engine, fire engine. I saw this in the, or a mural of this in the Ohio video. 
wasn't sure what it was. Here's an actual one. Wait, what is it? Believe it or not, it's a fire engine, steam powered. Ah. Yeah. I saw a mural of one and uh, I was like, what is that? And people told me in the comments, it's a fire engine, steam powered. And yeah, here's one. Here's an actual one. This is a Pennsylvania coal forest. You're standing in the middle of it, hon. Standing in the middle of what? Pennsylvania coal forest. This is what it looked like here 300 million years ago. Do you remember? Of course I remember. Anyway, over time, layers of dirt and rock covered these plants and insects and animals. And over the course of millions of years and pressure and heat, all of this is turned into coal, including that big lizard. He was turned into coal. Did you know that? Uh, I have to say that no, I did not know that. Yeah, giant insects like that one? I could have lied, but no, I don't know that. Well, now you know. All of this from 300 years or 300 million years ago became coal. Amazing, huh? It is rather cool. Got some animal dioramas here and uh, these black bear cubs are about to attack a porcupine. Are they in for a big surprise? No. Yeah, you can see it. It's really good. They did a good job making this. All right, it's time for an early dinner. Uh, local place. They're just speakeasy. Menu looked pretty good. Do you think we're going to need a, a certain coat to not let me jump in? A what? It's a speakeasy. Don't we need some kind of some kind of code to get in the front door? I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> nope. We can go right in. It's not. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we're going to set at the bar. You know, it's a quaint little place, isn't it? Right across, uh, basically across the street from the Capitol building. I'd imagine that's a lot of their customer base. And we don't, and we don't need a secret code to get in the front door. I've already established that. At least not at this time of the day. <laughs> and we've got our Jack Daniels. We're waiting on some pretzels as a appetizer because we are in Pennsylvania. So you got to have pretzel, right? Our pretzel is here. Uh -oh, did I take a bite too soon? I was gonna say there's some of that pretzel missing. <laughs> You ate some of it, didn't you? I couldn't you? help myself. It's got some cheese I and... I totally didn't do that. The bartender did it. He did it. <laughs> yeah. Don't blame him. Uh, we got mustard ale over here. So, uh, is it good since you've already taken a bite? It wasn't me. I'm when you weren't supposed to yet? I heard the bartender said it was good, so he's quite impressed with it. All right, we're going to uh, snack on this. <laughs> All right, our food is here. I'm having prime rib, medium rare. With some fresh made mashed potatoes and broccoli. It's supposed to be cheddar and red skin potatoes. And anything else yeah, for cheddar, red skin, mashed potatoes. Yeah, it is. I'm going to see my fork digging in. I want to try them. Okay, yeah, you can try some. And you've got the salmon salad, blackened I've got salmon. A garden salad with blackened salmon salad. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, garden salad with blackened salmon. There's lots of vegetables on there, huh? Look good. Look yummy. They look really good. Mm -hmm. Well, we have been eating for like 10 minutes. That's all I can do so far. Okay. Barely made a dent into it. I trust that you can have a, a bit more. Than no, I'll be taking some of that back to the hotel. You're trying to act all like demure. I only eat little bits on camera, but I've seen you wolf it down when you're not on the camera. Not true. <laughs> anyway, it's delicious. Uh, you can almost cut the steak with just a fork. It's uh, fantastic. Mine was scrum delicious, but like usual, like always, pretty much, I need to take a good bit of it back. You've hardly eaten any of it. No, I have. Plus, we start out with pretzels, and those are filling. The salmon is very, very good, and the salad itself is great. Okay. So. Yeah, it's all really good. Fantastic. All right, everybody. So that's the end of this video. We had a nice time in Harrisburg. I had a lot of people tell me it's a, it's a rough place, but it wasn't at all. Very nice town. Really like it. So uh, anyway, we will be heading, well, we got a little bit more Pennsylvania to do than New Jersey, maybe some Delaware, rural New York State. That's all coming up. So be looking for those. Turn left onto 7th Street, then turn right onto South Street.